Hello guys, so welcome back. This is part four of the Mega Drive mod series. And today we're gonna to be covering the Overclock mod, which is the most difficult mod of the series. You know, we're gonna to have to get into the Mega Drive and start messing around with the CPU, uh, lifting legs out of the board, stuff like that. Well, it's only one leg, but you know, it, it, is, um, it is more difficult. So I would just like to stress that you have to be patient. You can't, you know, don't get irritated. Just be patient and you will, you will come out of the other side of this one intact. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do, obviously we've already got our stereo mod and our region mod in. We're gonna bung our switch here for the overclock mod. So I'm quickly gonna take this uh, to pieces, just put that in so I don't have to mess around with that later on. So that's just gonna do that now quickly. So first of all, um, the thing you're going to need for this mod is special. You're only going to need this type of switch for this mod if you're going to do the LED mod, which will be covered in part five. Um, and this is a single, um, this, sorry, this is a double pole, double throw switch. So that means it's the same as the region mod. You've got three positions on the switch, which is on, off, on. But the difference here is that we have two rows of pins and each set of ro each row is independent from each other so you can have one circuit on this row and one circuit on this row so obviously one side here that will do the overclock and the other side here will do the LED um, so yeah just uh, remember that you need to double uh, double pro double pole double throw switch so let's get this in Okay, that's good. So I'll, tight, I'll tighten that up later. I just wanted to get it in there so it's done. So next thing, um, we don't really need to touch the Mega Drive at this moment in time because there's, uh, we have to prepare the little circuit now that we've, gonna, um, we've got to build to attach to the CPU. So at this point, put your Mega Drive back together and get it out of the way. Okay guys, so for this section of the mod, we need to create ourselves a little uh, circuit. So we need three cables, black for ground, orange or red for five volts, and our blue for our new 10 megahertz clock, basically. Um, then we've got our little Vero board, which is really handy for the soldering process and keeping things neat and tidy otherwise you'd have to be soldering to this little crystal you'd have to be soldering to these legs here and it's it's, an, it's irritating so it's much better to use one of these boards and you know if you can extend the board and add more things if you want to yeah you know, for other mods but i'm not going to cover those here for the moment anyway um and then the last piece is this little 10 megahertz crystal or oscillator you need the four pin version so obviously you can see there it's got four pins and the pin out on this is basically, I don't know if you can see that very clearly, but on the top left up here, you can see that the edge is squared off. Let me see if I can get that a little bit closer. You can see the edge has got a squared off section portion to it. So that indicates that that's pin one. So this is pin one here. Then this pin over here on the top right is pin two, and that will carry our five volts. Bottom left, is pin three and that carries our ground and then finally pin four down here on the bottom right that gives us our 10 megahertz clock speed so we need to mount this thing on our Vero board do some soldering to prepare it for our wires and then uh, and then we'll carry on and get ready for our next bit so uh, let me uh, let, let's get on and do that Okay guys, so I'm just editing this bit into the video here because uh, after recording this video, I, I realized that I didn't really dis talk about the, um, the Vero board properly. I didn't kind of explain what the Vero board is and how it's you know, beneficial. Um, and if you, if, you, if, you know, you know, if you know about Vero boards, then fine, you, know, you can skip this part really. But this is for people who maybe don't do electronics that much and they don't really understand what the Vero board is or how it works. So the main thing to remember about the Vero board is you can see the lanes going across horizontally there. Um, what that essentially means is that each lane um, is is isolated from each other. So this row here, um, you will only connect to other holes on that row. 
and the same for each uh, row down. Um, the main thing here is in the middle you can see, if I just tilt that there, you can see that this middle bit doesn't have any copper there. So what essentially that means is that this side of the board is isolated from this side of the board also. Um, if you were to put your oscillator kind of like that on that bit of the board there, so it's like on one side of the board and it totally you totally miss this center part, that essentially means that um, these two pins that are attached on this lane will actually be making a connection and you don't want that. What you, you need each pin to be isolated from each other, otherwise you're going to get some really strange results. So what you need is you need your oscillator to sit so that each leg, like so you've got two legs on this side of the board and two legs on this side of the board. So you, basically that means that each um, leg will be independent from each other. So this leg here will connect to anything you apply onto this this lane here. This leg will then also connect to anything that you apply on this lane, and the same for these ones here. So this leg will apply, uh, will connect to anything that applies on this lane, and uh, and for the other leg too. So that's just a little bit of information about the variable there, just in case you don't know uh, what a variable is or what it actually does. So essentially, it's just like a little circuit board with copper tracks that are isolated from each other so that you can connect opponents in, in the right way. So that's all we need to remember guys is that the oscillating chip, each leg has to be um, isolated on the circuit in order for things to work otherwise you're going to get some strange results. Okay guys so what we need to do is we need to mount our oscillator on the back of the board and what I've done is I've just quickly put some um, little blobs of uh, blue tack on the corners really because when we turn this upside down I don't want it to be sliding around too much so there we go we put our, put our oscillator dead center on the back of the board then we're going to need to flip it over and reveal the pins and then this is where I just add a little bit of pressure there so hopefully it, yeah it won't move around too much and now we just need to bung some solder on the pins Try not to stay on there too long because these devices are delicate. guys so there you can just about see so you can see our four pins and our solder attached so that's that's the first part you need to do okay so next let's go to pin two and add our gra um, our five volt signal so we put our five volt uh, cable through this part here next to where we need it So, and we'll bend the wire over. Okay, that should keep it in place with a bit of luck if we bend the cable over. So that pop through, I didn't bend it properly, two seconds. There we go. That's better. Right, cool. And then we'll just apply a bit of solder to that. I'm not happy with that. I need a bit more solder over the hole. Come on, there we go. That's better. That's better. I'm still not perfect with the soldering. I'm still learning. Sometimes it doesn't go where I want it to go. <laughs> but you know, you live and learn and you get better with every time you try. So, uh, okay, so there's our uh, 
there's our uh, five volt wire attached. Next, we need to go for our ground wire, which will go here, ground wire on pin three. So let's do the same thing for that. There's our pin three done. And then the same thing for our clock speed. And there's our clock speed done. So this is the easiest bit of the mod really. So we've got our uh, five volts here, our ground black here, and our 10 megahertz there. So it's up to you what you want to do in terms of isolating this board. Uh, yeah, let me just show you the soldering points first before I talk about that. So yeah, you can just see the soldering points there. Hopefully if it's focusing, yeah, I'll just tilt that around a little bit for you. So that's basically the soldering points on the on the live part of the board. So it's up to you how you want to um, insulate this. Um, I have seen some nice little black cases that you could possibly buy and encapsulate this inside one of those little cases and plug that um, and just place it inside your Mega Drive, just a little hole in the side. Or you can just run these cables all out of one little area and just wrap it up in insulation tape, which is probably what I'm going to do for this uh, for this video. But in the future, I think um, I probably will look into using some of those um, little boxes, these little plastic boxes, because they look pretty cool, actually. So, um... But anyway, next we need to move on to the most difficult part of the mod, really, which is working on the CPU itself. So, yes, let's get on and do that now. So we can see our CPU here, and basically what we have to do now is first we need to count along the pins to number 15, which is this one here. I've already put a little bit of felt tip marker on the top, like red felt tip up there. So what we need to do is remove the solder from the bottom here. And we need to actually get in and pull this leg up. And that is, you know, you've got to be really, really, really just, you know, patient with this because if you if you rush it you might snap the leg off and stuff so just take your time take your time now I'm going to be using some of this stuff which is solder braid so you basically you, you stick that on top of the little point and you just bung the soldering iron down and hopefully it will lift that solder out for you you can also use the soldery sucky device uh, this thing which can suck solder directly off the board as well. Okay, so first things first, let's try and get rid of this solder. Now you don't want to stay on the pin too long because you don't want to burn anything out. Okay, it's coming slowly. I'll get a close up of it for you in a sec. Literally just applying a teeny bit of pressure, giving it a bit of a wiggle. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see now that most of the solder has been lifted off and there's a slight, you can, you can just see the leg poking down into the ball just slightly there now. So I always struggle with this bit and what I tend to do is I tend to get myself a really small knife like a scalpel blade and then I'll add some heat to the solder and then lift the leg off at the same time so that I don't have to completely get rid of all the solder if you see what I'm saying. So basically you make the solder liquid and then pull the leg out quickly but obviously not you know take be careful but you know you, you, you've got to not obviously not have the solder on there for too long so I'm quickly gonna do that and hopefully fingers crossed it all goes well and that's it that's done that's the hardest bit done come 
on. In fact, I'm probably going to use something a little bit more sturdy than that knife now, if I can. No, that's too big. What about this file? Where's the file? Yeah, this file might be a better idea. Let's try this file. There we go, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Oh, that's a painful process, guys. It really is tough, but it's doable. You just gotta be careful. So let's get you a closer shot of that. All right, guys, so there you can see our leg is lifted cleanly out of the pin, out of the, uh, the socket. The leg is really long. It's longer on, on this one than it was on the last one, actually. So that's why I had so much trouble getting it out. It's really, really long leg. And I may fold that leg up underneath itself. You can see there's like a little, let me see if I can just get a scalpel blade here. You can just see there, there's the leg basically, how long it held. So that was all the way down into the board. So it's quite a lot of leg to get clear of the board. So you've got to remember that there's obviously solder under, under the board as well. So you could, it is difficult because you've already got the mods in place, like the stereo mod and the region mod, for example. Um, so it's kind of difficult to get the board out and sold at the bottom so I just find that adding some heat and just trying to pry this leg out quickly without keeping the heat on too long is probably the easiest way but just try and clear some of the solder before you do that I mean sometimes you can you can you can clear all the solder just lift the leg out without any heat but I find this is probably the, the easiest way to do it well I found anyway so yeah that's it guys that's the leg clear so now we just got to do some soldering on it and uh, we'll be good to go and get everything put together. So uh, let's get on to that bit. Right guys, so our next task is to prepare the board for soldering our points. So our little circuit here, we're going to run the five volts and the ground to this capacitor here. You've got the plus down there, which will be your orange or red cable, which is the five volts. And then on the other side, you have a minus, which is your ground. So that will run directly to this capacitor. I mean, you can use any, there's quite a lot of points on the board, but I'm going to use all the stuff closest to it. So it's all nice and compact. Um, then I need to flatten out this pin and put some solder on the pin on the top and the point underneath. So the point underneath will carry our original seven megahertz clock and that will go to one end of the switch. The leg of the chip will go to the center point of the switch. And then our new 10 megahertz clock wire here will go to the last end of the switch. All right guys, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bend this leg into place. There we go, keep that nice and tidy. Lovely. And now we just need to add the solder to the points we want. So I'm going to get one underneath here on the original clock position. There we go. And just add a bit of solder to the top of this leg. Lovely. We want some extra solder on the plus and minus on this capacitor. some on this side right so next guys we're going to stick a green cable to the original 7 megahertz clock position on the motherboard so that's underneath where pin 15 is currently sitting There we go, there's our original clock speed. Uh, and then the next thing we need is our, a white wire, or whatever wire you want, but I'm gonna use a white wire on top of the pin.
There we go. So there's our two wires there. It will go to our switch. Okay, so next we need to take our Vero board circuit. And we want to solder our ground of five volt points onto this capacitor down here. So let's get that done very quickly. There's our ground. Yep, happy with that, right? So if we take a quick look at what we've got. Okay, so there at the top, you can see our five volts and our ground are soldered to that capacitor point. And then down here, we have our green cable for our seven megahertz clock and our white cable for the pinout on the CPU. And then we've got our 10 megahertz clock on this blue cable coming out of the uh, Vero board. So now we just need to turn to the switch and get all these, get these three cables here applied to the switch and then test our Mega Drive and see if we're, see if we're running properly. Okay guys, so as before, we just need to add some solder to our switch points to make it easier to put our wires in. So I'm quickly going to do that. Just make sure you don't leave the soldering iron on these points for too long. And now we just need to get our wires in place. So, our original stock green colour is going to be going on this bottom end of the switch, which is essentially the top, because obviously the, you know, this is upside down. So when we flick it to the down position, it'll make the contact between these two points, the the bottom and the middle and that will give us our stop clock of 7 megahertz. In the center position that will disengage the switch because it won't be making any connections at all and then in the up position it will make connection between this top one and the middle one and that will be our overclock 10 megahertz state. So we're going to get our green wire here, our white wire here and then our blue wire here. There we go, that's nice and easy. Now we want our white cable in the center. Now one thing to remember actually, which I haven't mentioned, is that you need to keep these cables as short as possible because um, you get interference on the cables obviously and that mess with the overclock state, uh, the overclock oscillating chip basically. So you need to make sure you keep, I've got mine about roughly four inches long they say you need them about three inches, but three inches for me is just too tight to work with. Um, so I wouldn't go any lo longer than four, four inches for each of these wires. The blue, green and the white cable, you want them no longer than four, like four is the max. So if you don't, if you don't, uh, if, you, if you get them any longer than that, then you're going to start getting, you know, sort of, the chip's going to start messing up and you're going to get glitching and all that type of stuff going on, so... There we go. So that, in effect, guys, is done. Now let's put it back together and uh, give her a little test. See how we're done. Hello guys, welcome back. So I've tested this Mega Drive for a good hour in full overclock mode and it's running really nicely I haven't had any glitching or anything like that so I know you know this mod is working fine um, if you do experience glitching then there's a possibility that your wires here are too long um, or perhaps your chip may may be one of those chips that struggles with overclocking so that's something to bear in mind so I've heard some chips do have problems with overclocking um, so you might be unfortunately unlucky and your Mega Drive just can't handle the 10 megahertz. But um, 10 megahertz is generally a safe bet. I mean, there's other people who are up, um, overclock 
as much as 13 and I know that that goes silly when you go up that high so uh, stick with 10 that's your best bet for this overclock mod so literally all I'm going to do now is I want to secure this um, Vera board circuit with the uh, crystal inside and I want to insulate the pins um, from the pro for the processor so I'm literally just going to add some hot glue to these two pins to uh, keep them safe and um, add some hot glue to this packet and sort of seat it around here where it'll be nice and uh, nice and secure so it won't be you know flying around inside the mega drive when you move it and that so that's pretty much all I'm going to do add some glue and then that's it basically some glue here to the processor and we're just going to seat this packet on here make sure you don't get it too close to the cartridge port and we'll just let that set okay guys so that's pretty much it what I'll do now is I'll just do a quick uh, video capture of some games showing um, overclock state and normal 7 megahertz state just to give you a you know a sort of comparison of basically how good the mod is you know what how, what the improvements can be for some games so um, we'll move on to that and uh, thanks for watching catch you next time